Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart, and today it's time to bring out your dry dead as I take a look at painting the Tomb Kings of Khemri for the up-and-coming Warhammer The Old World or Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Those of you who have been following the channel will probably be aware that I have been working on a Britannian army ready for the release of the old world, whenever that happens to be. I think with Epic coming out this year, that's probably going to be next year now. But I'm still super, super excited for the old world's release. Warhammer Fantasy Battle has probably got the biggest place in my heart for a war game. Definitely the game I started with, so I am super, super excited. So alongside those Bretonians, I've been doing some painting tutorials, usually one-off figures for other factions in the game, but I haven't really done anything for Tomb Kings. I have done a very short painting tutorial for a 3D printed skeleton um, right at the beginning of the, the series, really, but I wanted to tackle the official GW sculpts and cover how I paint the gold and the colours and the shields and all those kinds of things. Now there's quite a lot of rumours around there being some kind of launch box and if it is, is it going to be Tomb Kings versus the Bretonians? We definitely know that they're both going to be focused on a lot at launch, they've said that already and both of those factions have had miniatures shown off so far so I think it's quite a safe bet to start to look to build a Tomb Kings army to face off my Bretonians. Now I've got loads and loads and loads of projects on for different game systems and different things I want to do so if I am going to do a second army I want it to be something that is super quick and easy to paint and that really is going to be the focus of this video. But in order to do that, I needed some miniatures and I didn't have any at all and the prices on eBay were getting a little bit crazy. However, I did manage to find a set of 16 foot skeletons and eight skeleton horsemen, which were at a price that I deemed acceptable in the current market. They weren't perfect, they were completely unpainted, but they were already assembled. So I needed to do some cleaning up of the miniatures. A couple of them had the odd missing leg or something like that, which to me doesn't really matter with skeletons because it looks like they've, uh, you know, they use their, they're raised by magic anyway. So that, that kind of works. So I set about fixing them up, cleaning them up, and then rebasing them for the old world. So that meant moving the skeletons from their 20s to the 25mm squares that has already been announced. And those of you who have followed my Bretonian journey will know that I've had a little bit of a guess at the size of the basis for cavalry now. Now this is based on a lot of rumours anyway, um, from the same places that rumoured the size of the 20 to 25 millimetre bases before that part was announced. And, and looking at the pictures that Games Workshop have released of the new painted Bretonians, and looking at how big those horses looked on them compared to the old size, and using some mock-up bases, I guessed that they were going to be on 30 by 60s. We don't know that yet, but I guessed it, and I knocked some up um, to 3D print. So I've made some myself and 3D printed them, and I'm using more of those bases with these skeleton horsemen. So if you're looking at the miniatures later on in the video and wondering the base size thinking it looks different that's why now I don't know for certain I'm doing this at my own risk and I have to rebase them I'll have to rebase them so please don't go and copy them unless you're fully aware that I'm doing it at a bit of an educated guess now once the miniatures are all glued on their new bases I added some ruins I had these are made of plaster of Paris it was a kit I bought on eBay years ago never built and it's been a good source of basing material ever since. So I set about researching the paint schemes on how I wanted to paint these two Tomb King units so rather than just doing the individual models I've done for some of my tutorials I do want to potentially add this to a small army for myself so I thought I'd delve into the lore a little bit more and look at old army books and things the sculpts themselves probably aren't the most anatomically correct. I think they're fairly cartoonish and funny, but I do like them. 
So I decided I wanted to stick to the same bone recipe that I did for that previous tutorial. It's super quick and easy, and I really want this video to showcase how quickly you could paint up an army of Tomb Kings. And I thought that I could really, really draw the eye with a nice bright shield designs and some lovely golds. So I'm going to use blues for the shields, I'm going to use reds on the shields as well, and lots of vibrant golds, but I'm going to paint the spears and things a little bit more realistically with a, with a more down-to-earth wood colour, and this will also save some time with the painting. Ultimately, helping anyone that wants to follow this to produce these miniatures that in a quite a striking way, but a really, really simple way that's nice and easy to follow without needing too much skill with either the airbrush or the hairy brush. Now, this tutorial does use Zenithal priming, so black first, and then I'm using model color white air through the airbrush as a zenithal almost directly top down. I do spend a little bit of time as well picking out the shields, making sure it's a little bit lighter at the bottom. That's an effect I've chosen rather than exactly where the light would fall and that will become apparent later on when you see me paint the fronts of the shields. Now if you don't use an airbrush Please don't give up on the tutorial now. You can work this from a white prime or from a grey prime with a dry brush heavily over the top afterwards. The effect you'll get without using the airbrush will still be pretty cool. It will look slightly different because the black shadow that's there from the Zenithal Prime really, really adds, I believe, to the tone on this. But all the techniques I do afterwards, you could absolutely copy. Um, and they, while they'll look slightly different, they will still look pretty cool and they will still be a very quick way of painting your Tomb Kings. So with both units fully primed, we were nearly ready to go. You'll notice that I've made my unit of skeletons up to a unit of 20 by using some double bases with some extra terrain in there. So they'll work a little bit like unit fillers. So there's two with only one skeleton on. And then there was another one with a couple of broken skeletons. One's missing an arm, one's missing a leg, and they're shambling together at the back. One of them looks like it's dropped his shield. Adds a cool bit of character. Now what better colour to start with other than Contrast Skeleton Horde? And what I'm going to do here is apply it fairly liberally over the whole miniature, but I'm doing it in stages. And in between, I'm cleaning my brush, drying it off, and with a wet, moist, clean brush, I'm just removing a little bit of the paint from those flat areas. And that way, you're essentially doing your highlighting already. Following exactly the same process with the horses as well as the main skeleton riders themselves. Just remembering to go around and remove those large pulled areas from the top surfaces, the flatter areas of the miniature. So it really saves you a lot of time where later on you'd want to clean that up. Once that was dry, I've gone to Contrast Garrick Sewer and I'm using this for the insides of all of the shields. Now you, you don't see them very much in most of the poses. There is a natural kind of detail inside that looks a bit like wood grain. So where the white zenithal's gone in there, you get quite a nice effect by applying this fairly thinly anyway. Obviously using the same method on the horseman as well. And I'm also using the same colour on the spears. Then with the spears themselves, using the same method as I did on the bone, I'm cleaning my brush, wiping it off on a towel, and then with that damp brush, just removing that top layer of contrast paint where the light would catch, essentially doing a highlight while it was still wet. You get a bit of the natural highlight anyway because of the contrast zenithal method, but it really just saves time. And my intention here is to do a very quick paint job I don't want to have to go back and do extra highlights on the whole miniature just on bits that catch the eye so 
So next up, I'm using hardened leather from Army Painter. You could use Gore Grunter Thur if you don't have the Army Painter range. Uh, the reason I've gone with the Army Painter range here is I just love the way this flows into the recesses. Again, this will mean that I don't need to provide a separate highlight afterwards. Now I'm using this in some of the areas that you could see as leather. I think on a lot of the GW paint schemes, this is often painted as red. Again, I wanted to make it look a little bit more realistic and earthy. If you can have realistic live skeletons walking around, but I'm using it on the miniatures with the headbands and the ear protectors. I haven't got ears. Um, at the sides. Um, and some of them have some strapping on their body as well. So you may well see me grab different miniatures for different shots as part of this tutorial. Now I really want the shields to stand out. So I'm using this Caribbean turquoise here from Express Paints from Vallejo. Now if you don't have Express Paints, something like Croxagore. Um, from the contrast range will, will give you a pretty good approximation or something similar to it. Now the idea is I want to keep this from pooling completely so I'm being very careful about how I apply it starting at the top and then keeping all my brush motions sort of downwards and that way if it does dry with any streaks at least all those brush marks are going the same way and when I highlight this later which is one of the areas of the miniature I will highlight I can paint lines in the same direction and, and build up an effect. Some of the shields have more segmented designs and where they do I'll be painting some areas red so I'm taking my time here on this cavalry model to try not to get to this lovely turquoise blue anywhere other than where I want it because I want that nice clean canvas to work from for the red paint afterwards. And now it is time for that red and returning to the contrast range it's Blood Angels red lovely rich beautiful colour here. So I'm going to aim for the little triangles that are around the edge of the shield at the top alternate to the blue and I'm also going to go for the centre stripe beneath the skull. Now onto the first of the metals I'm going to be using scale colour black metal so this is scale colour is scale 75 and I'm going to be using this on all my spear tips. Now it's not always super visible on the miniatures or on this video but I'm using the same metallic colour to paint in the handles of all the shields as well. Now to start the base of the gold and what better than necro gold for also from scale colour. Love this colour, very kind of dull and desaturated, almost like a dull brass colour to start with and I'm covering all of the the rest of the metallics with this essentially and those are mostly on the shields so you've got the shield edges at the top you've got the embossed skulls and things like that then on some miniatures you've got little studs on their head straps and around the rims as well also as banding Depending on the miniature, they have different shield details, so I'm being very careful here to pick out the, the gold areas of the, um, the embossed parts of the shield, and I'll go on and do the, the remaining sort of triangles in gold and the skull as well, just being careful to try and keep it away from those that nice blue and red base that we already have. Now that's a pretty good tabletop base. I like to do these little jump off points for those of you know from my existing videos. You base these now and that's a pretty cool looking Kenry Force. Um, I am going to go and do some more highlights. Um, not on everything on the miniature, mostly focusing on the shields and things. But I will do a little bit more and just show how you can really make it pop. So first up we're going to use some model colour off-white and I'm going to do a very gentle and careful dry brush on the bone. I'm not going over the whole miniatures, just catching some of the detail on the face, maybe on the knuckles or on the backs of the miniatures where you can see their ribs and their shoulder bones. I'm really trying not to go over the top because I quite like the effect that the Xenothal Prime and the Contrast Skeleton Hall gives you. Now, I'm doing this out of order 
that I would normally do it at if I wasn't doing this painting video. I will have done this stage before I painted any of the shields, any of the leather areas. But I really wanted to show you at the jump off point how the miniature would look if you just use the Zenithal and then all those contrast layers and flat metallics. Now we're on to some scale color Caribbean blue. You can see I've had this for a while. It's the kind of color you, you don't use too often. Now I've mixed it down 50-50 with water and I'm just giving a subtle highlight on these shields. So I'm painting around the edges of that bit of torn fabric there. I'm going to paint around the edges of the tear itself, any other little dinks and tears. And then also around the edge of the shield, almost like an edge highlight, but it's because it is the actual edge, you can turn your brush on its side and, and get away with that quite easily. You can see here with the more detailed shield, I used the same method. Now I will go in and, and pick out some of the triangle parts just to make them really pop and stand out. I'm also doing some little vertical lines down towards the bottom of the shield where it's a little bit lighter. Again, I think this makes it pop lots, but you really don't need to do this. And when you see the weathering stages later on as well, you can get away without doing this and still have a really, really cool looking miniature. Now to highlight the res, I'm using Citadel Color Layer Evil Sun Scarlet, and this is a really nice first highlight on the reds. Just freshens it up, makes it pop a little bit more. If you wanted to do further highlights, you could. I will on character models, but as these are basic rank and file, and the whole point of this tutorial is to, is to do something that's striking but relatively quick, I'm just going to do the one highlight, allowing that Zenithal pre-highlight to do the heavy lifting. Now it's time to start shading those metals and let's start with the spear tips and I'm going to be using Nuln Oil. This is the new formulation so it doesn't pull quite as much. I think it's pretty cool, I like it. So I'm going around putting on all the spear heads a little bit more heavily where the shadow would be and I'll come back and highlight those a little bit later on. For the gold areas, I'm using Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss. Now, this is a great colour, but it is a little bit thick and gloopy, so I've thinned it ever so slightly, and I'm not covering the whole gold area with it. It's too, too thick for that, and it will remove all of the nice gold shine you've got. And once I've dotted it on the rivets there, I've just wetted the end of my brush a little bit, and I'm just using that to feather it out and provide a little bit of shade and take it away from the tops of those rivets themselves. Again, when I get to the skull, focusing around the eyes and on the, the lower part of the face, not too much on the top of the forehead because I don't want to lose that gold. If it's a little bit too thick, come back with a cleaner brush and just clean it off a little bit. I go around and do exactly the same thing on all the other shield designs. They do vary slightly. Some like this one have a lot more gold on, so you just need to be careful to not to overly saturate your gold and clean away when it's too thick. But then we come on to highlighters anyway, and I'm using Elven Gold. You can't see that it's rubbed off the bottle a little bit, but this is also from the scale color range. So I'm focusing here where the light would catch, so picking out the tops of all the rivets on the skull. I'll make sure that forehead stands out, maybe picking out the cheekbones and things. We'll also do a line around the top of the shield. You can use your edge of your brush for that. And then a few little downward lines like scratches and things just to really finish it off. Same method on the different shield designs. You can see me working here on the Cavalryman, picking out the light on the tops of all these sort of embossed buttons. And I'll use the same method on the skull and make sure that I'm focusing on the top area of the shield as well. Using Game Air Silver to highlight the spear tips. I'm using a bit of a mixture of dry brushing and just sort of painting in the edges as well. So I'll pick out the rivets there. I'll do a lighter line at the bottom of the spear shaft where it will be a little bit brighter. And just paint in using the side of my brush on the sharper edges of the spear as well.
Now we're getting towards the end now, so it's time to start working on the bases and I'm covering all of the ruins in some black Templar. This is the lighter of the blacks with almost a bluish tint to it. A lot of the buildings in the army book, the 8th Ed army book, had a kind of a black granite or marble themed to them. So I thought covering them in black would be perfect. Now for the main part of the basing, I'm using a texture paste. This is um, from AK and it's desert sand. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. I think it costs me about eight pounds 50 for 200 mils of it. It's brilliant stuff. It's quite heavy um, and quite smaller sand grain to some of the texture paints out there, but that's perfect for sand. What you find is that it uh, dries fairly smooth. Well, what I mean by that is no brush marks and things in it. And I think we all know that when sand is dry, dry and it settles you get that nice dune effect rather than that churned up mud effect and that's that's what you want really with desert basing and once that effect is fully dry and it's important that it's fully dry you'll end up with a god awful mess i'm using some contrast agarash dunes now i thin this um 50 50 with water and i'm just applying a very thin layer over the top of the textured paint area almost like a glaze really just to color it slightly but pick out some of that fine texture detail now once this is fully dry as well and that's also just as important i'm applying some dry pigments and brushing them firmly into the texture this takes away any tide marks from the washes now these vallejo pigments one is dark yellow ochre it's a really warm yellow and that, i think that's quite important for the effect here i want to give the appearance of heat and uh, you want them to look like they're standing in a very dry acrid hot area so the the almost like the sun's reflecting off the earth then i'm also using green earth as well which is almost whitish powder and i use this a lot less but just add it to a corner area or a certain section of the base and it just provides a slightly sort of different tonal effect in different areas i'm also brushing these powders powders directly over the ruins and that really just tones down and provides a small filter all over those basically what are plain black um, ruin painted ruins I'm using two brands of tufts here I've got some war painter scenics which is what's going on at first and then some war paint figures as well the slightly different style of tufts just to provide a little bit more variety so the one has almost like a bleach tops so think Aussie cricketer from the 1990s and the the second one is more of a sort of dull dark brown and um, it just really breaks up the bases and adds a little bit of interest and they just pop on super easy and it really finishes off the bases nicely then of course the obligatory black rims for all of my armies really really tidies up the bases and finishes it off And it wouldn't be Warhammer if I didn't add the odd little blood effect here or there. And here I am with some blood for the blood god, adding small patches to a few of the bases and the odd shield. And there we have it all finished. Now I've painted a lot more miniatures than I normally do for tutorial. We've got two full units here. I will show you a couple that have been focused on in the video, but you'll also have some pictures at the end as well of the whole units. So this is one of the skeletons that's more basic that you, you've seen throughout the video, but I'll also show you the examples of the ones with the sort of leather head straps or hats or whatever they're supposed to be on the top. And I'll show you an example of the cavalry as well but I'm really really happy with the way they've come out that powder going on just always adds the the extra effect makes it look super dry and I hope that if you watch it all the way through you'll see that there's very very simple techniques here you can skip those highlights if you wanted to and the rest of it is something that's super simple without the, the secondary highlights it's something i think you can very much a beginner painter can follow and and do appreciate the the effect that's created with the zenith or highlight may be an issue for some people if they don't have an airbrush but even if you've got an airbrush or thought about getting one and you're only really using it for priming or for sort of varnishing and things like that anyone can learn to do a zenith or highlight with an airbrush and the amount of time it saves you and the effect it will give you 
um, I think it's well worth having if you're going to paint a, an army like this. Now, I'm really, really happy with the, with the way they've come out. I think they're a, a striking unit and I'm, I'm actually excited to pick up some more. Um, my wallet tells me I should definitely wait based on the cost of them at the moment, but um, should I pick up a starter set that has some in or aim to get a starter set at the time, um, I've got a nice healthy start here now that I could add another unit of each and then a character here or there and I'll have a, a small start to an army to face off against the Bretonians ready for the launch of the old world when it's out. Um, I definitely think the skeletons look absolutely fine on those 25s. It helps them rank up. I didn't build or pose these. There are still a few that, that because their spears sticking out straight, they don't fully pose and don't fully rank up. So the extra size really, really helps. But yeah, I, I love the way they look and this was incredibly simple to do and that red and blue just really really pops with the gold to to make such a simple scheme stand out so let me know what you think have you painted any tomb kings yourself or what methods have you used have you seen anything in the video here that you like explaining a little bit more always happy to answer questions in the comments if you've enjoyed the video please do give us a like it helps me know that i'm doing a decent job and helps other people see the video as well and if you haven't already checked out the other videos on the channel please do so there's lots of other warhammer fantasy stroke old world related stuff there many tutorials me rabbiting on about my thoughts of the game and things as well if that's more your style of video of course, there are many other things covered on the channel as well. Lots of historical things and there'll be lots more different stuff to come in the future. I've got quite a lot of plans and it will really expand the range of things that are on the channel. So please do check them out and consider subscribing if you like what you see. But that all said, thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. Take care and I'll catch you soon.